Hi, my name's Rob Kelly, and this short video is about a product that we are launching today, the 8th of December, that I think is really going to help people to learn how to thrive, and particularly to learn how to thrive more quickly and reach their thriving-related goals more quickly and more predictably. So with the Thrive Programme, we are continually looking for and getting regular feedback from people that have been through the programme on how well they're doing, how we can improve it, changes they recommend, things they found difficult, things they found easy. We've also got a full-time research team that are continually looking at uh, all sorts of research and evidence in the areas that the Thrive Programme works, particularly around positive psychology and people making significant changes to their lives. Because of this, we're regularly tweaking uh, the books and making changes, sometimes just very minor changes to the various Thrive Program books that are out there already. Um, trying to make them easier to follow, more simple to follow, and this way success is definitely more likely uh, the easier program is to follow and the more predictable it is. Now, the Thrive Program is a multifaceted uh, approach to empowering people to take control of their lives. It helps people to change a number of different areas of their beliefs, attitude, uh, habitual thinking styles, and significantly adds to their knowledge of behaviour and psychology. And we're talking about real psychology here, real psychology. One of the key areas focuses on helping people to recognise and change habitually driven thoughts, feelings and behaviours. These habitually driven thoughts, feelings and behaviours. As I said, it's real psychology. It's not mumbo-jumbo. This is real evidence-based psychology for change. These habitually driven thoughts, feelings and behaviours are really among the hardest things for people to get a grip on and make significant changes in. And that's what we've been looking at specifically recently. When learning to thrive, when setting yourself on a six or eight week programme of change, pace is the key. Remember, pace is persistent and continuous effort. A little bit of effort all the time, every single day. You need to recognise that change is taking place. Sometimes change is very, very small. Sometimes you only get 1% better or 1% different each day. And you need to recognise that. You need to recognise it to feel positive about moving forward. You need to recognise it to realise that actually you are making things happen, you are making a difference, and that uh, the effort you're putting in is worthwhile. You need to process the fact that change has taken place. At the end of each day, you need to sit back, sit back and realise that I've done this differently, this has worked out better, I've been calm, I've lost weight, I've drunk less, I'm getting drunk less, I'm getting over my phobia. One of the most important things it transpires that one can do to achieve that is to keep a journal, is to make notes, a diary of the changes you're making and the efforts that you're putting in. Some of the research. Gail Matthews found that the positive effect of written goals was supported. Those who wrote their goals accomplished significantly more than those that didn't write them down. In fact, she, she uh, came to the conclusion that if you wrote your goals down, you were 40% more likely to achieve them. That's a staggering amount. Alistair McAllister and Lee Bryan, writing can allow the diarist to gain a fresh perspective through reflection and the distancing of his or herself from the situation, becoming an observer of, as well as a participant in, their own life. They also found that diaries are affordable and portable, and thus easily accessed, can offer a venue of immediate support and catharsis. Further, once goals are established, the diary can record these clearly, thus providing both concrete reminders and as actions are taken, a reality check that progress is being made. This process can raise self-belief, optimism and commitment. Looking back on progress made can also offer the writer pleasure and be confidence building and life affirming. These people found that the findings reported here provide preliminary evidence that writing about future goals is helpful in reducing ruminative thinking and physiological stress reactivity. We know, don't we, that um, uh, sometimes people that have a brooding side to their nature or an obsessive side to their nature find it much harder to make changes 
because they're brooding and going over it time and time again. Having these things written down, having these things diarised, reduces the amount of rumination. They went on to summarise that it may well be that persons who actively focus on life goals gain awareness and clarity about their goals and restructure priorities and or gain confidence in approaching their goals. This particular piece of research uh, found that we've often been surprised to see that even patients who are very reluctant to talk face-to-face -face are willing to produce detailed written homework. That is to say people perhaps that, that don't or can't work face-to-face -face with a consultant or don't want to talk to their friends or their partner about it can still do the bulk of their change work with themselves writing it down in a journal. Boshin and Casey found that homework is a core element of cognitive and behavioural interventions, allowing the patient or the client to rehearse skills that they've learnt during sessions with the therapist. Adherence to homework tasks is known to be associated with improved outcome in CBT. Now, of course, the Thrive programme isn't CBT. Nevertheless, the research is helpful. Botona and King found that within a sample of 90 undergraduates graduates who randomly assigned to write about either an intensely positive experience or a control topic, for 20 minutes each day, just for three days. Mood measures were taken before and after writing. Three months later, measures of health centre visits for illness were obtained. Writing about IPEs was associated with enhanced positive mood. Writing about IPEs was also associated with significantly fewer health centre visits for illness compared to controls. This is just for three days, three months earlier. For three days, three months earlier, these students spent 20 minutes a day writing down positive experiences. Three months later, they had fewer visits to their doctor. That's a significant effect. Conan and Fitzpatrick in, Fitzpatrick in 2007 found that writing can encourage clients who are distant from their emotional world to approach or to modulate emotional intensity and create meaning or coherence. And what they're really meaning is Though you might verbalise something strongly or in a catastrophic way, like, oh my God, my, my day was bloody awful today, they're less likely to write that down. In fact, they're more likely to think it through and say, work was quite difficult today. So it allows one to modulate your emotional intensity, to reduce the catastrophizing, perhaps, to reduce the dramatic element in your thinking and your feeling. So we've looked at all of this research. These are just some of the slides here. And we looked at all the feedback and we've spoken to lots of people who've been through the programme. And what we've done, uh, I'm very pleased to say, is created a very, very simple product to help everyone get through the programme as easily and predictably as possible. So I'd like to introduce to you the Thrive Programme Journal. Now you can't tell from the picture, but this is an A5 size book. So it's a half size of our normal book. It's small enough to fit in a handbag or a back pocket, or a suit, sorry, a briefcase, or a work bag, or something like that. We've put a cover on it that actually, although it does mention Thrive, is fairly unobtrusive. It's not really going to attract much attention from people. So you can use this book sitting on a train, at work, sitting at home. It's easy to keep it in your top drawer, keep it away from prying eyes. So this is the Thrive Program Journal. Now this journal can be used alongside any of the other Thrive Program books be it the smoking book, uh, the emetophobia book, the main thrive book, the fear of flying book, or any of the new books that are coming out. What you have is two pages per day to make your notes in. The programme set out in the book for eight weeks. Most people don't take anywhere near eight weeks, but there's eight weeks worth of pages in the book so that you've got eight solid weeks, 56 solid days worth of journal in there. Now you can use this journal whether or not you're seeing a consultant for help or whether you're just going through one of the books by yourself at home. It's easy to follow a specific plan that's going to be laid out for you in the journal. It's easy to stay on track when you've got a specific plan to follow. When you know you're on track, it's much easier to stick to it. Also, if you are going to drift off for a few moments, it's much easier to see where you've drifted off track in order to get back on it because it's never going to be more than one day. It's really useful for goal-specific thriving. That is to say, even if you're halfway through the programme or you've already been through the programme, 
I launched this at our annual conference this weekend. And most of the Thrive consultants are already using the journal for themselves. And most of them are already really thriving to a high degree. It may well be that you're already thriving in your life, but you want to train for a marathon. Or you want to lose some more weight. Or you've got another goal you want to set for yourself. It's ideal. Uh, it's an ideal way of achieving that particular goal, writing it down and you can focus on it for six to eight weeks and this will really help you to achieve it. Most people don't like carrying around a big bulky A4 book. Many people that go through uh, the normal Thrive Programme book work with it at home and don't carry it around with themselves in the day. They perhaps consider it quite big and bulky or there's lots of written work in there uh, that they'd much prefer to have in a smaller, easier to use diary. There are blank pages in the back of the book for extra notes. You can note down your, your quiz scores as they're changing as you go through. You can add in some symptom specific information. If you're overcoming your emetophobia on your journey to thriving, you might copy some of your notes across from it. You might have some relevant notes from the main book. You might have some homework that your consultant has specifically given you. Or anything else you want to make notes of, you can keep everything you need to know packed within this one booklet. You will still need to refer to your main book. There are no other notes in here. It's a very, very simple um, journal. There's, there's an introduction page at the front, and then basically it's just two pages copied out for eight solid weeks. So this is the first page. This is the left-hand page that you're seeing when you open the book. And it starts with a, a statement, I'm grateful for. So starting your day, any day, with a gratitude attitude is incredibly empowering. Not only does it help you to keep a realistic appraisal of or have a good perspective on your situation or life, it encourages you to focus on what you have actually got in life rather than what you haven't got, and hence helps promote calmness and internality. What are you grateful for today? Your answer might simply be my children or the lovely weather. It could be something like having my lovely friends around me or being able to get around. For some people, including myself, the answer is quite often simply being alive, being around today. Some people died last night. The next line down is, what sort of day do I want? Or what sort of day do you want? Do you want a lovely day, a calm day, a day without pain, a day without anger or alcohol? Maybe you simply want a day where you can manage your thinking well. Why wait until three o'clock in the afternoon to realise that you've wandered off track in your thinking or your mood or your goals? Start the day with the, the way you want to proceed. Set out your stall first thing in the morning. I'm going to stay positive and have a great day today. Write that down. Make a note of it. The next line is, what do you need to do to achieve this? What do you need to do to achieve the sort of days you want? Do you need to eat less, work harder, or maybe get up earlier? Do you need to focus more on your Thrive work? Study your Thrive book more? Maybe spend some more time writing in this journal? Maybe you need to have a conversation with your boss? Apologise to your wife or phone your friend up. Writing it down here will make it far more likely to happen. The next part is steps I am taking to build my foundations. What steps do you need to be taking today? Remember that your foundations are your sense of power and control over your experiences, what we used to call just locus of control. And in addition, your self-esteem. What do you need to do today to create a more internal sense of power and control? and raise your self-esteem. Maybe you could challenge one or more of your answers to your locus of, coal, lo locus of control space quiz in your book. Maybe you could sit down and do your process in the positive exercise, which is actually on the next page. Maybe you could challenge your social anxiety by going into town and talking to a stranger, or wearing odd socks, or sending an email with a spelling mistake in. Other things I'm working on, which is the next column down, this is obviously the place for you to note whatever else you're working on at the moment. Your comment here might be, go to the gym today, run for 30 minutes, eat less, organise the work's Christmas party, take the dog for a walk or something similar. Make a note of it here and it's far more likely to happen today. On the bottom half of this page, you can use the boxes to change unhelpful thinking or language you've used. This is an incredibly important exercise and it's in every single version of the Thrive Programme book, changing negative or unhelpful thinking or language into far more positive. This is what the right-hand page uh, looks like, and it's separated into just two sections. 
to day's positives and daily notes and reflections. The top part is for your positives list. This is also part of every Thrive Programme manual. Your positives can be any positive experience you've had in the last day. I haven't numbered this list, but I want you to aim for between 5 and 10 new experiences every single day. And these can be small things like, I felt good in my new suit, or someone smiled at me on the way into work. Slightly bigger things like, I feel better since I started exercising, well done me. Or really big things like, I'm working through my Thrive Journal and are beginning to change my life. If you can, try and add at least a few positives that are Thrive related, such as, yesterday I did really well to manage my thinking during a meeting, or I'm proud I stayed relaxed at the dentist yesterday. Either way, you want to find 5 to 10 new positives every single day. The bottom half of this page, Daily Notes and Reflection, is the area where you can make notes about your progress, differences you are seeing, small changes you're making. It's really important to document uh, that sometimes you see very small benefits. Recognise that the efforts you're putting in are having positive effects and you are on the road to thriving. You might want to draw a picture here or do a little mind map or make a note of how high you got your self-esteem to today. Either way, all of your notes about your day, about your journey, about your progress, about your route to thriving can be summarised in this two-page spread every single day. Everything you need to know right in front of you on one page. Uh, so two pages, but on, on one block right in front of you. We're really, really excited about this journal. It's so, so simple, and yet I believe that it's foolproof. So you can get this journal from Amazon. You can get it from uh, any of the websites. Um, you can get it from... Uh, thriveprogram.org, you can get it from emetophobia.co.uk or you can get it direct uh, from us, direct from the publishers but uh, get hold of the workbook, get hold of the uh, journal it's really really uh, simple to use and uh, I'm really positive that you're going to see huge advantages of making your notes in this alongside uh, the main book so thank you for watching this short uh, video and uh, wish you all the best